pass it off to our Toastmaster of the day, Karthik. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, good afternoon to all the guests and the beloved members of this club. Today, I will be your Toastmaster of the day. That means I will be proctoring the meeting for most part of it. And as part of the rituals, I will be getting started with the agenda for today's meeting. We do have a packed agenda. We have two speakers with two prepared speeches um, alongside with so, so many other exciting uh, things. So with that said, let me go ahead and sh share my screen so that you all can see the agenda. Um, apologies for the, hope you can see my screen. Wonderful. So, like I said, I will be proctoring the meeting for most part of it, but I will also be helped with a lot of our members, uh, particularly our grammarian, the table topics masters, the evaluators, the timers and watch person. So with that said, I would like to introduce uh, our first, uh, you know, role, which will be the grammarian, who will then introduce the word of the day. So it will be Carmen Hill. So Carmen, take it away. Make a quick introduction about your role. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. So I have three roles for today. The first role is to determine when you're saying filler words such as um, uh, okay, like, so just different words that when you speak, if you can pull those out, it makes your conversation more fluid. It allows someone to not be distracted by those words that you're using. And it allows you to make your message clear and concise. I'll be, so that's the first thing I'll be looking for, for, for whoever speaks as well as the Toastmaster. So anyone who speaks today, I will be looking for that. The second thing that I'll be looking for is interesting uses of words. For example, sometimes when speak when people talk, they have these words and these phrases that stick in our heads and our minds, and they just give these different images or they remind us of past events like childhood things. Just those little interesting things that add that extra flavor to whatever someone is saying. That's the second thing. The third thing I do is word of the day. And most of you should see that I popped in the word of the day already. And the word is miasma. Okay. Miasma. I've never heard this word before. I love when I haven't heard words before, but miasma is a noun. <clears throat> it's an unpleasant or unhealthy smell or vapor. A miasma of stale alcohol hung around him. So again, it's a noun, a miasma of stale alcohol hung around him. And this actually reminded me of my favorite book, Dracula, because <laughs> they always talk about that uh, very sour smell uh, from the count from when he's sucking people's blood. But I guess we can, that's a, I guess, a plug for our um, Halloween version of our meeting. So I'll leave that till someone else does that. But that's my role for the day. Thank you. And back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Carmen. That was very, indeed, very comprehensive. Uh, so I, I don't think any of us see the word of the day in the chat yet. So if you may want to double check, wonderful. We see it. So thank you again, Carmen. Uh, next up is going to be another interesting role, which is, which is the topics master. So for today, we have Irma who will be the topics master for the day. Irma. Thank you, Karthik. Yes, today I'm going to be the topics master of the day, and we are going to practice speaking for one to two minutes. It's going to be quick. It's going to be easy. I have really easy questions today, so let's uh, practice our speaking skills. Wonderful. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much, Irma. Up next, we have uh, Eva, who will be doing the timer and awards. It's okay. You can take your time. But in the meanwhile, while Eva does, uh, miasma, one thing that reminds me of the word miasma is, um, you know, these days miasma has become very synonymous with my life because I do have to change the diapers. That's my duty. Uh, so I get to deal with miasma a lot these days. With that said, I think Eva is ready to give us a quick introduction. Great, great word of the day usage there, Karthik. <laughs> I actually, I put it in the chat, I know that one from uh, anime. So, hey, the more things that you're into, the more you know, but there was a show called Inuyasha and my asthma came out a lot in that show because one of the bad guys had that kind of power. So, hey, 
our hobbies just come full circle and teach us things. So I am our timer of the day today. And so for the timing roll, you can see the timing indicator lights on the page here. And instead of using lights, we actually use virtual backgrounds. So when we meet the minimum time for all of these different categories, for speeches, it's five to seven minutes. So you can see there at five, my light, or in this case, my background will go green, six, yellow, and at seven, it goes red. And it's the same for table topics and evaluations. When you hit that minimum time, especially if you're doing table topics today, and perhaps you haven't done one in a while, make sure to pin me. I will actually raise my hand. So when I do that, you will see that I'll go over to the top half of your screen. So right now I should have just jumped to the front. And so you want to keep an eye on me so that when I turn green, you know that you can stop. But if you have a few more sentences, keep going. Then I'll turn yellow and you're like, uh oh, I got to wrap this up. Let's continue one or two sentences and then try to stop. And if I go red, don't just stop in the middle of your sentence, finish it out, but try to finish within that 30 seconds so that you can still qualify. We have a 30 seconds buffer that says, okay, come on, let them finish, let them finish, so that you can still qualify for awards. Bringing me to the second half of my responsibility, which is the award keeper. And so at the end of the meeting, when we have all of the, all of the scores in for timing, and we know everyone that qualified, we'll send you a link in order to vote. Make sure that you do that link, even if you're a guest, please go in and fill out that survey so that you can give us the results and we can announce the winner. So my favorite part, you get to announce winners. And so that's my role for the today. So I'll go back to my blue background until we get ready to time. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Eva. Uh, with that said, let's move on to the first speaker of the day, which will be Josh. So Josh is doing his level two of his dynamic leadership path. And today he's going to be giving a speech on to introduction to Toastmasters Mentoring, where he'll be sharing some experiences from his NGSA Academy or the Sales Academy uh, at Dell. So take it away, Josh. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Toastmaster. I don't have anything to share yet, but I will be sharing one thing during the presentation. So I want everybody to turn the clock back to 2015. It's Throwback Thursday. So eight years ago, try to imagine me as I paint this picture. I'm in high school, scary times, I know. I was working part-time jobs as a lifeguard, going to high school, trying to figure out what I wanted to do in college. One thing that remained constant while there was a lot of change was I really loved sports. So when I came home from school, typically for studying, I would sit in my parents' living room, put all my study material out on a coffee table, kind of lounge back a little bit, do, you know, Pomodoro technique, 25 minutes studying, watch some sports, rotate back and forth. Didn't really party too much. So anyway, why do I mention this? Well, the year 2015, there was a very big football game. Notre Dame University, the Fighting Irish, um, was facing the Virginia Cavaliers, and it was the beginning of the season. It's on a Saturday. I remember watching this game. Anyone, If anyone in here is a football fan, you're probably going to know what I'm talking about, and this will hopefully make sense. So UVA was an underdog, meaning they weren't expected to win this game. They did have a lead with about 15 seconds to go. Notre Dame had the football, and as long as they didn't score, the Virginia Cavalier Stadium was going to go nuts. They were going to storm the field, going to be a huge upset. Now, I wasn't a fan of either school, but I was like, hey, it's a good game. I'm going to watch it while I study. And with about 15 seconds to go in the game, Notre Dame throws a touchdown in the end zone, and the entire Virginia Stadium is just flabbergasted. The smell of miasma was all over the place with alcohol, raging fans. People were just kind of, you know, flabbergasted on how they actually lost this game. And the screen pans out to this gentleman. So this, this gentleman turned out to be literally a celebrity. They nicknamed him Sad Virginia Fan because as the game ended, he was crouched over the brickyard railing in the front row, just agonizing in defeat. And I remember watching this gentleman on TV. I was thinking, wow, I feel bad for him. I'm passionate for my Longhorns, just like he is for Virginia. And so you might be thinking, why in the world, is, who is this person? Who is this person, Josh? Well, I'm gonna let you know that this gentleman was actually my mentor at Dell Technologies. And with his permission, I'm able to share this story. His name is Mike Bunting. You can look this up. There are literally thousands of articles, news reporters, ABC, ESPN, Disney, all interviewed him because this went so viral back on Twitter when Twitter was actually called Twitter. And he is a fellow solution architect here at Dell Technologies. He's had an inspirational 
impact on my involvement as an architect, and I've been able to be a protege underneath him. I just felt compelled to share this story as part of the speech. So, as I mentioned, I was new to Dell about a year ago, and the role that I was hired into typically only hires twice a year. They typically hire in June or July and then in February because you go through an academy and they want the academy to have a cohort or a class. It doesn't really make sense to sporadically hire. You want to have a consistent group of, you know, 30 people from spring graduates and winter graduates. But I was the oddball, of course. I was hired at the end of the summer during, you know, generally hiring freeze. So when I applied and interviewed for this position, they were like, we're going to make an exception for you. We're going to get you into the next generation pre-sales academy academy or NGPA. The only issue is you're six weeks behind, which in a consolidated program, I had a lot of catching up to do. And this gentleman, Mike Bunting, who I showed you, went through this exact program about three to four years before I did. It was called something else back then. But I was privileged to be paired up with him. And he provided numerous areas. I can go on for a long time about his involvement in my life. But I'm going to focus on three main areas. Organization, involvement and enablement, enablement and how he allowed me to be where I am today. So as mentioned, I was hired on and I had a lot of things to do, a lot of rec infinite recordings to watch. And what was scary slash fun was I was told I got to pass my first IT certification. Woohoo. And it's a prerequisite to be in the job. I didn't know that when I interviewed, but after I got the job, they're like, all right, you got to study and pass. And, you know, I had a lot of scary thoughts dating back to college when exams weren't really fun, especially engineering exams. So Mike was critical in my development. We actually were some of the few people coming on site last year in 2022. We would go into a collaboration conference room and I, Mike was like, you just gotta chill out. You're gonna pass this exam and I'm gonna show you some study ways. So this was the organization. He helped me learn the new language of IT. We literally went over products and he said, this is like mama and dada. Like you gotta have this foundation before you can start understanding you know, storage. So. I've come a long way because of his organizational skills. So again, imagine us in a conference room, drawing out concepts that just seem crazy, wicked challenging when I read a PDF from the Knowledge Center. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. It's literally building blocks of foundational IT knowledge. And so much of the material on the exam came directly from the study guides that reading comprehension was a huge component. So organization was number one. Then he started getting me more integrated like I said, integration number two. I was shadowing calls. I was getting to meet customers and partners. And I was gonna, I was starting to help out with the pre-sales process of designing, analyzing, discovering, and defending solutions. So I know this is at a high level, but the academy, like I said, they put you through an extremely fast-paced program and then you're customer facing and you support the business, you know, wherever they assign you. Mike and I were actually assigned the exact same segment. So we were literally rubbing shoulders. I was his protege. And it was a great fit because of that. Then came the engagement and enablement piece. Starting at the beginning of FY24, we separated, meaning he was covering one aspect of the business and I was coming in covering another. We were both inside architects. We had so many reps that we couldn't stay glued together. We had to divide and conquer. And I believe Mike's involvement in my life really helped me to where that I am today. As soon as that mentoring process ended, well, it didn't actually end, he enabled me to work on my own customers, my own accounts, and I've been able to drive success in a lot of new initiatives. In fact, the screen you see behind me is actually the new team that I'm a part of after I graduated the academy. Because yes, I did have a virtual I did have a virtual graduation, and caught up on that massive to do list that you know I was originally behind on. And Mike Mike was always there for me. He came in. It was more than just showing initiative and coming in, even when there was mainly empty cubes around us. It was connecting on our faith, connecting on different elements of life supporting me, uh, surprising me at my house. And then I also helped him through some personal errands um, that he had. And these and these all enabled me to take the initiative that, I, that you see today. And I wanted to leave this story with you today because if anyone here is in a mentor-mentee relationship, either inside or outside of Toastmasters, I hope this sparks some fire in you. I hope it brings you energy and life, knowing that as a protege, I'm always here to lend a listening ear. And as your mentor, lead, you can always reach out to me. So thank you for your time. That was a terrific speech, speech, Josh. You never fail to impress us with your energy and your, your enthusiasm every single time. So thank you very much for that. Um, if I may ask uh, 
Eva to put one minute on the clock uh, for the members to give a feedback to Josh. He will be give, give, given a official feedback, formal feedback towards the end of the meeting, but it's time now for all of us to give a short feedback to Josh. Make sure you reply directly to Josh and not to everybody on the chat. And that way the feedback is private. Looks like we are at one minute. So thank you very much. If you're still writing your feedback, continue to do so and send them over to Josh directly. With that said, let's move on to our next speaker. We have another exciting speech by Drew, one of our relatively newer members, uh, who's already giving his second speech uh, in his uh, pathway. So Drew today will be giving a speech, um, a project titled Writing a Speech with a Purpose. And the title of his speech is Language, the Door to Explorer. With that, Drew, it's all yours. Thank you, Karthik. And can everyone hear me? Okay. Yep. All right, perfect. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, yes, thank you again for the introduction and all that. The, my speech today would be the language, the door to explore. You can never understand one language until you understand at least two. A quote by Jeffrey Willens, an author and writer in the American, in America. Learning is ubiquitous. It happens daily at different frequencies and parallels, and not to mention the many domains where we learn from. One of my favorite and most powerful ways of learning is that of through language. And so throughout my speech today, I'll be relating to learning the Spanish language. So from over the past 10 years of studying Spanish, my goal of this speech today is to express the value and the wonderful journey of how learning another language can change your life. So when really thinking about why I love and value learning another language, the overarching theme is gaining perspectives is most prevalent. So first, language itself. And it is a perspective that I truly believe um, is something that we can all relate to. So the dialects that you learn from language are throughout the different regions really open your eyes to how that language operates. So for example, Castilian Spanish in Spain is an incredible, they say vosotros, which is the same way how in Texas we say y'all. And then all the way, it differs down differently from the Caribbean Spanish where people will say, they say vamos a la playa instead of vamos a la playa. They kind of take off some of the, a few letters and whatnot in their language. So it differentiates from region to region and dialect to dialect. And then even down into Argentina and Uruguay, where there is kind of the Rio Platanese Spanish, where they use a sh sound for show, or uh, it's the same way that we say the word S in the word measure, or sorry, the letter S in the word measure, is the same pronunciation that they use to say amarillo or yo quiero ir, something like this, it's how it sounds. And another thing within the language perspective is whenever you're learning a language, you have to practice and you have to get out there and make mistakes. And I encourage you to embrace those. It's people are not going, people admire the fact that you're trying to learn a new language and that you're practicing. And so it's definitely encouraged to go out there and embrace those mistakes. And I'll give you a quick example. Whenever I studied abroad, my junior year of college in Barcelona, Spain, I was studying and I was living in this dorm and I went downstairs to go to to go ask the attendant of where I could buy some hand soap. And what I actually, what I said was, uh, necesito sopa de manos. And what I'd actually said was, I need hand soap. And where can I buy hand soap? And, or no, where can I buy hand soup? Sorry. And what I meant to say was, where can I buy hand soap? And so those things are two very different, soap and soup. 
but it was just a, a great uh, mess up that we both laughed about and enjoyed, you know, that was very silly on my part and basically just encouraging you to get out there and make mistakes and that it's going to be okay. Another perspective that I love about learning another language is the food that you encounter. So you're basically will open your eyes to many different cuisines uh, throughout the different regions of where the language is spoken. The best example I can give here is my dear friend, Jordan. Jordan, whenever, Jordan also had the opportunity to go study abroad in Spain around the same time I did. And we talked about the adventures that we were gonna have in Spain and we're so excited and we're like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so great. And then he mentioned, I can't wait to go eat tacos and burritos in Spain. This is gonna be the best thing ever. I love tacos and burritos. And little did Jordan know and soon find out that in Spain, the cuisine is completely different. There's no tacos and burritos everywhere. It's much more of a Mediterranean cuisine with paella, tapas, patatas bravas, and these different Mediterranean uh, meals that were much different from your typical tacos and burritos. And so Jordan made, made the naive mistake of associating two different cultures and with just because they share the same language. And another thing is that you'll learn kind of through the food aspect is the timing of when they eat meals. So dinner is very late in the Spanish culture of typically having dinner 8 p.m. is early. So maybe 10 or 11 p.m. is typical for having dinner. And the most important meal of the day being lunch and having a siesta sometimes afterwards. And then another story of uh, an uncommon food is whenever I went into a grocery store in Spain and I went to go looking for uh, what I thought was typical. I said, ¿Dónde está la mantequilla de mani? Where's the peanut butter that much of us probably have in, in the U.S.? And there they kind of looked at me confused and brought me to an aisle where there was Nutella, which I was also confused and like, all right, I guess, you know, it's maybe not as common here. The last perspective that I love is the education system and the things that you can learn through different education systems throughout the world. So here in the U.S., for example, we learn, we are taught that there are seven continents in the world. And then in Argentina and many other countries around the world, they actually taught there are six continents with Americas being one where we distinguish North America and South America separately. So in summary, I guess with that being said, I believe that learning another language will help change your life through vast experiences and introduce you to new concepts and understandings. And I'll leave you with this. When I backpacked through Argentina years ago, I ran into these two guys from France. We were staying at the same hostel. We were around the same age. It seemed like guys that I might want to hang out with or get to know because I was traveling by myself. And I quickly learned that they didn't know any English and I didn't know any Spanish. I didn't know any French. And after a little bit, I realized that they were able to speak Spanish and I was as well. And the fact that we were able to share this experience of speaking Spanish to each other changed the entire trajectory of the trip and really left a lasting and wonderful trip of making connections, going out. And they were my friends for the weekend. And we were able to share experiences and, and get to know each other as well. So with that, I hope you understand how learning another language can open the door to exploring a whole lot more and also change your life. Thank you. Excellent, excellent speech, uh, Drew. That was very insightful. So thank you very much for sharing your experience with us today. Uh, with that, uh, Ava, can we have one minute on the time of uh, time time of peace? And team, I encourage you all, highly encourage you all, to give uh, Drew some feedback, uh, some informal feedback. This is only Drew's second speech, so please keep that in mind as you give him feedback.
Thank you, Eva. That is one minute. Please continue to give your feedback to Drew. Uh, but we are at least two minutes behind schedule today. So with no further delay, I will pass it off to Irma to take us through the table topics. Thank you, Karthik. So this is the portion of the meeting where we're going to practice our impromptu speaking skills. And I was watching some of the older tape uh, meetings on YouTube and to get some ideas. And also because last week I was Toastmaster and I was wanting to see how people did it. So, and I came across one of Brian, I saw him on the call, but I don't see him anymore. He had this table topic session where he did easiest to more difficult questions. And I thought it was great. So I wanted to go ahead and mirror that and offer the option to pick. I have eight questions. Number one is easiest. Number eight is a little bit more difficult, really not that bad. I mean, I, I think they're all pretty, they're all pretty easy prompts. And you get to speak for one to two minutes. And I will, you'll get to choose a number and we can, I can give you the prompt and then you can speak for one to two minutes. So who would like to go first? I promise they're all pretty easy. Carmen. Hello, how are you? Hey, thank you for volunteering. Oh, how as I you? squirm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, let's do eight. Number eight, absolutely. Yes. If you became president, what would be what would you do first? This is a tough one, man. I mm. so being that I'm not the public policy queen, I would have to probably err on the side of what I am good at, which is relationship building. I think there are well, and because I'm not great at at public policy, what I would do, the first thing I would do is to put a, forgive my language, a kick-ass staff around me, because I realized that me being powerful does not then dim anybody else's light. I can have other powerful people around me and still be that powerful person that I need to be. And it's because I'm being vulnerable and saying, hey, I need you all. I would start the process of listening before speaking. I think sometimes people want to jump in and they want to say, I've got this. This is what we're going to do. I would love to listen to some people who I've heard in the past who I feel have been powerful in that role. So I would willingly speak to some of the past presidents and understand what are some of those pain points? What are some of those things that I need to watch out for? What are those things that will make my term a little easier? And and I'm a cross the party line kind of girl. I wouldn't care which side it came from, because, again, relationships matter to me more than um, partisan politics. So I would be looking to be that bridge wherever I could from a collaboration standpoint, from a listening more than I speak initially standpoint, and from a doing what would benefit as many people, not just in the U.S., but around the world where I could help. So I guess in essence, I'd be looking for world peace as the first thing that I did. Thank you. If you ever run, you got my vote. <laughs> <You're> sweet. <laughs> I love that. You would make a great president. Okay. And it looks like, Cindy, do you want to go? No, no, too nervous. <laughs> so David, David, David put his hand up. Uh, I think David is going next. Um, yes, David, David. Yeah, I can go. If Cindy doesn't want to. Um, what number did Carmen choose? Um, eight. Oh, she chose eight. Damn. Yeah. Um, I'll go with five. Number five. What is something most people don't know about you? Oh, that's a great question. What is something most people don't know about me? Um, I think one thing that most people don't know about me is that I swam collegiately and also represented the U.S. in open water. So I started swimming at the age of five. I did summer league um, swimming 
that's where I learned to swim and that's where I fell in love with the sport. And up until like middle school, I tried so many different sports. I did soccer, baseball, basketball, tennis, um, just really anything because I was had a lot of energy, very ADHD. And so once I got to middle school, um, I was doing really well in swimming. And so my parents put me in club swimming where I excelled um, in distance right away just because I had so much energy and I just wanted to swim all day and I wouldn't stop. And then once I got into high school, I was doing really well. So then I decided to swim in college um, where I specialized in the mile. And then I was fortunate enough to represent the U.S. Um, in the 5K and 10K open water. And you'll swim usually that race is in like a bay area or on the beach um, or in a lake. And yeah, it takes like two hours to swim a 10K. So I'm definitely glad that um, period of my life is over and now I run marathons. So, <laughs> or I'm signed up for one in December. It'll be my first. So yeah, that's something people probably don't know about me is that I used to swim collegiately. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Wow. That's awesome. And Jen, Jen is next. Jen, what, what number would you like? Let's go at number two. Okay. Uh, number two, do you prefer dogs or cats and why? <laughs> oh, well, that's a great question. And I, I think most people here know that I'm a dog person through and through. I have two dogs. I volunteer at a shelter and I also go out and rescue missing dogs. So I could safely say that I am definitely a dog person, but that does not mean I don't love cats as well. I love all animals. Uh, anything that you can cuddle with, I'm on board with. Dogs have a special place in my heart because I believe they truly can be man's best friend. I talk to my dogs all the time. I tell them secrets that nobody else knows. And they look at me like they actually understand me. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Probably just because I'm holding a cookie. But they do give me all that love and support that I need. And they're constantly looking at me like I'm the most beautiful, wonderful person in the world. And you know what? That's pretty big confidence booster. So cats, as lovable as they are. They take it, take it or, or leave it. Some days they love you. Some days they don't want to have anything to do with you. So that's my answer. Thank you for the question. That was a great answer. I'm, I gotta say I'm neither. My son loves everything. He loves cats. He loves dogs, a rabbit. Um, so I'm learning through giving him, we have two dogs. We had zero before we had him now we have two dogs and they've grown on me they're pretty they're pretty great they do that <laughs> yeah yeah you give them this much love and they give you this much <laughs> yes anyone else I see Karen going. All right, yes. I'll give it a try um let's do right in the middle I'll do take four yeah what simple fact do you wish pe people understood? Ooh, a simple fact. Well, this is actually going to lead into what I plan to do for my icebreaker speech. But a simple fact that I wish more people knew was that our brains don't stop moving and growing from the time we start developing until we die. And um, it's called neuroplasticity. So there's a new word for you. Um, and plasticity just means that something's malleable, it can move. And then neuro, of course, refers to our brain. And why I wish more people knew that is because oftentimes we get stuck thinking that we are one way or the other, or we view other people that way, that, oh, that person is always like this. This person will never change. I can never change. And I think that's where a lot of conflict can happen. And conflict resolution really comes from being able to see something from another person's point of view, being able to change your mind, being able to learn something. 
So not only does it help with interpersonal relationships, it can help with um, social, economic, governmental, big issues, you know, that Carmen would be facing as the president, um, just knowing that we can, we can constantly change. And it also shows that we're also able to learn. We can take anything on and we have the capacity to grow and to learn. So I think that's something, it's a simple fact, but I wish it was more embraced and just in the, the front of our minds at all times that I can grow, I can change, I can learn. And so can everyone else around me. So that's what I hope people would learn. That was a fantastic answer. I love that. And Mr. Toastmaster, I think that's all we had time for. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Irma. That was indeed a great uh, set of topics and great speeches. So thank you everybody for that. Um, we will now move on to the next part of the meeting, which is all about evaluations. Um, so I would love to welcome our first evaluator, uh, which is, uh, who is Bianca. And then Bianca is going to be evaluating Josh's speech. Although Josh is not around, uh, Bianca, feel free to you know give us the evaluation. We'll share it with Josh. Great, thank you, Karthik. I know Josh isn't here. I'm going to speak as if he was, so he'll come back and listen to this recording. Josh, if you had asked me what was your key takeaway from your last speech, I I couldn't do it. There were there was so much information. But today, you delivered a much tighter message, and the vast majority of your content supported your main point. It was really clearly about a time when you were a protege, and then you told us the ways in which this specific person, Mike, was so impactful in your development. And all of your points uh, really tightly supported that. So first of all, great job, applause, and I encourage you to keep working at this because you're still rushing past some very cool content because you're trying to cram in so much information. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of things to think about. So one thing I would encourage you to cut out is um, you do this thing that is kind of a filler word for you. You have this habit of undermining yourself by saying things like, why am I mentioning this? Hopefully this will make sense in the end. I felt compared to, compelled to share this. I know this doesn't sound relevant, but it will be relevant. And this seems to be a pattern for you. So I would just say, stop, stop. Either it's relevant and make it a part of your structure, or maybe it's an indication that something that you've shared is not as relevant as you think it is. So please be really mindful of that. Uh, I do wanna say that my favorite, favorite, favorite thing is that you played with the introduction. And this is a message for you, but it's a message for everyone else in the group as well. You did this wonderful thing where you said, imagine me, I was here, this was the situation. And I did imagine you, I could see you propped in front of the TV with all of your school materials spread around you and watching the sky on TV, not knowing that someday this person would be instrumental in your life. And I think you could have hit that point a little harder because it was like a reveal that in my mind, I, I didn't I didn't really catch until like a few minutes later, what was the connection between the two, but it was a really powerful moment. And I love how you just pulled us in, in your introduction, because a lot of times we hear speeches that say things literally like, my introduction today is that, or people tend to use vagaries, like, remember a time when somebody was instrumental in your life, and there's this quote that makes me think about and, you know, it's not a bad thing, but what you did was so powerful. And I feel like everybody should 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 try and try that at least once in your life. Just jump into that story. Imagine me. Imagine this time. So I really loved that about your speech. It was definitely my my favorite thing. Uh, so much growth from your last speech. So I would say great job. And by the way, your last speech was just a week ago. So incredible, incredible, incredible progress. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Bianca. That was a very powerful evaluation. And uh, you know, if there was a category for best evaluators uh, across Toastmasters International, I would highly encourage that Bianca, you please take part. You will come out to be the champion. So uh, you're my favorite, favorite evaluator, uh, but enough said. Uh, thank you very much for the evaluation again today. 
Uh, next, we will move on to second evaluation. Um, so Ryan Johnson will be evaluating um, Drew's speech on writing a speech with a purpose. So Ryan, take it away. Thank you, thank you. I'm not, I'm not even gonna try to compete with Bianca, but Drew, I am really happy for the chance to be your evaluator today. And I thought you delivered a fantastic speech. I, and one of the things that I noticed is that as you started your speech, you seemed maybe a little bit hesitant, a little bit nervous. We, we all feel that way, right? I, I noticed that about myself a lot. When I start a speech, the nerves set in and I, I stumble a little bit and maybe it's a little bit hard to get into it. But what I loved is that over the course of your speech, your confidence built and built and built as you got into your flow. So I, I, I'll talk about that as I go, but I think I want to highlight some of the things that I, that you did that I think helped you get into that flow and start to um, excel in your speech more. And I, I really liked, and what started to catch my ear more is when you started to use, throw out a little bit of Spanish words, by the way, your Spanish is fantastic. I would love to hear you just go on and speak in Spanish for like a minute. I'm like, man, his accent is on point. Uh, I, I know Spanish, but I have probably not kept it up quite as well as you. But once you kind of got into that, you're like, this, this is your, that felt like your comfort zone. You started to throw out some words and started to relate it to us of, how vosotros means you all and those kind of things. And that's when I feel like your confidence started to build and you started to get more energy into your speech. And I liked the how you shared different pieces of advice as you went and shared some snippets and stories that supported those ideas, like talking about it's okay to make mistakes, right? That's one of the things when you learn a language, it's really easy to be afraid. You don't, in, in, not just learning languages in a lot of scenarios, it's easy to be afraid of making mistakes. Like, oh, I'm going to put myself out there. And what are people going to think when I screw up? And having the confidence to say, you know what? I'm going to put myself out there and I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to be curious. I love that mindset. I love that you shared some opportunities and stories about that. I thought it was a funny story when you talked about your friend and tacos and burritos in, in Spain. So that was a, a really funny, relevant story. And just overall, the message about that languages, to me, one of the takeaways is learning a language is not just about learning a language, but it's it's the culture and all the other things that, that come with it. And I thought you did a fantastic job sharing that with us. I, When you got to the end and you started sharing the story of when you were traveling in Europe with the, the other French speakers, like, I love this story. And I thought to myself, wow, that story almost feels misplaced. I would have loved it if you maybe had flip-flopped and like pull us in Bring that at the very beginning because you, your energy and your comfort level is really strong when you're sharing those stories. So I would almost flip it like the quote at the beginning was good, but man, give that to me at the beginning. Pull me in with that and then pull me along with the stories throughout. So overall, fantastic speech. Your eye contact was fantastic the whole time and lots of great things from your speech. So thank you, Drew. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ryan. That was a fantastic Evaluation, Ryan. Every time we hear you say fantastic, man, that open voice, the clarity, and that presence, that's awesome. The presence that you alluded, Ryan, I think I've mentioned this already to you. That's terrific. So thank you both. I think it's going to be a tough uh, you know, contest for all of us uh, to evaluate the speeches as well as the evaluators today. So appreciate uh, you all. Um, up next, we will have Eva providing us with a timer's report. Perfect. Thank you so much. So for timing today, Josh, uh, well, I'll talk to Josh like he's here. Josh, you were at 710, so over, but within our limit. I think that what Bianca called out is really great to try to keep you down just a little bit so you're not rushing. So I would love to see you land somewhere before seven in the future, but you qualified, so all good. Drew, you were at 646. You also qualified. Great job. And actually, everybody qualified today. All of our table topics were between 122 and 143. So great job. No one actually even went into the two minute red. So you guys did a really great job measuring exactly about the middle of the time. And then Bianca, you were at 306. So just a few seconds over, but you had some really great content in there. And Ryan, same with you. You were just four seconds under the three at 256. So really great judging that time to be right about three minutes without going over. I have placed the link for judging, award keeping, whatever we want to call it within the chat. So everybody, guests included, 
please click on that link and fill it out so we can have awards. Thank you. Thank you, Ava. While you all you know, submit your nominations for the best speakers and evaluators, uh, I will give you my um, preview of the meeting. I think we started on time. Uh, the meeting went very well. Um, the reason I'm saying this is uh, in the past, in the recent past, we have struggled to accommodate, um, you know, so many table topics, especially when there are two speeches. So, you know, given the fact we had four table topics and two prepared speeches and everything went on well, goes to say how well organized today's meeting was. I think enough said. Um, so please continue to provide the feedback so that Eva, Eva can share those results with us shortly. But in the meanwhile, I would like to welcome Carmen to share a Grammarian's report. Okay, for the Grammarian's report, I'm really impressed with this group and how well most times we keep down the ums, ahs, et cetera. Karthik, it's tough when you're in the role that you're in because you're not just doing the role, you're multitasking and other things. And it shows up when you're doing a role like this where you're multitasking because you get you say um a lot or uh a lot. So just keep it, you know, just keep that in mind as you're as you're doing that role. Even though you're not doing a speaking role, you're still speaking. So that's one thing. Drew, I like the fact that where you were trying to figure out what you were going to say, you did pauses. So there were some filler words, but I like that as you tried to get your bearing, there were some pauses in there, which we encourage pauses. Pauses are that moment for you to stop, reflect, think, as opposed to just trying to uh say and go forward. So good job there. David, there were several ums in the speech. Let me see something. Okay, yes. I was sitting there like, David, wait, who's David? I, I had to see your face. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so yes, David, there were several ums while you were doing your speech, uh, your your table topic, but I loved your table topic. Next, Jen had one, uh, Karin had one. Um, so again, very minimal. Josh, I loved his moment of serendipity with going back, figuring out who that guy was, and then fast forward, it winds up being his mentor. Drew, learning another language will change your life. I love the examples you gave for that. That was powerful. Uh, and that was, let's see. Oh, okay, David, when you mentioned ADHD, first of all, my son has ADHD. So that kind of, oh, I have a soft spot for ADHD brains. But it reminded me of Michael Phelps when you were talking about that swimming and, and all of that. So that was the imagery that I got from what you said. And I'll probably give one or two more and then move on. Karth, I mean, uh, Jen, you said anything you can cuddle with, you're on board. I like that phrase. Ryan, I said the same thing that Karthik has said. I love the use of fantastic. It just adds an element. So those were the, the oh, word of the day. Josh and Karthik used the word of the day. If I missed anybody else, please let me know because I apologize. Did I miss anybody else? No? Okay. That is my report, my grammarian report. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Carmen. That right. was indeed a great, uh, you know, preview. And uh, up next, I think we are at time for awards, but if you're still trying to send your awards, please, please do so, so that Eva can share, share that with us shortly. I have um, one, I will, we were missing yeah. one, so one of you didn't vote. So please vote, because I have two ties I need to break. So if you didn't vote, vote right now. Cool. Wait, Karthik, was that you? Did you not vote? <laughs> you suddenly got quiet. No, 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 right. Oh, All good. We still have four more minutes, Eva, so. It is really hard to multitask, teaching you how to do all that. Hey, while uh, while you're voting, this is a great time to talk about our meeting in two weeks. So what's in two weeks, everybody? A little bit over two weeks. Halloween! Halloween. So our meeting in two weeks on 1026 will be Halloween themed. You are strongly encouraged to come wearing some sort of costume or apparel, or even just have a Halloween background 
So we'll have a little bit of fun and we'll try to see if we can tailor the table topics and just the Toastmaster. Maybe we'll do a little bit of a theme of the day. Uh, I might give out some facts. I don't know. But that is two weeks from now to two weeks to find a witch hat or cat ears or a fun Zoom background. You can do as much as you want or as little as you want, but you are encouraged to have a little bit of fun. And it's still a normal meeting. We still have two speeches and two evaluators, but we will try to target tailor a little bit more towards a Halloween theme. And uh, we can totally vote for best costume because that is, I mean, one of my favorites. And if you haven't seen, go look at our pictures from Halloween. They are on our SharePoint. They are pretty phenomenal. We had a really great group uh, dress up the past couple of years. So go take a look at those. Are we ready for the awards, Emma? Uh, you didn't break my tie. Darn it. Okay, yeah. Uh, two seconds. Cool. Okay, I am ready. Fantastic. And I'm not going to share the wrong screen. Not going to do it. Here we go. Screen share. Are you guys ready? Please come off mute. This is your time to come off mute to ch cheer and clap and get all excited. Is everybody all excited? We got one minute. We're going to go really fast. Okay, everybody, here we go. With no further ado, best speaker is Drew. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yay, I'm going just a smidge bit fast because we are a bit of time. Right, oh. best evaluator. Yeah. Uh, one vote. Yeah. We know whose vote it is. Oh. One yeah. vote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, sorry. <clears throat> you don't know anything. What? And then our best table topics, drum roll, please. Do, 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 do. It's actually a tie between Carmen and K's win. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Please come in costume in two weeks, sign up for roles, get involved. If any of our new members or guests have any questions, you can always reach out to me or any of the officers, and I will look forward to seeing you next week. It's time to go to our meeting. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.